Uh, okay, uh, I think we should start. Uh, now we have a second part of the talk, dispersion in a fixed uh, dimension uh, by Ting Wei Chao. So please, you have uh, one hour. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the construction in our paper, proving the upper bound of the CD is polynomially determined, like dependent on D. So let's recall the dispersion is of a set P is just the largest empty excess parallel box, the volume of it we can find. So for example, the dispersion of these two points would be the, the volume of this box, which is, I believe it's four over nine. And the minimal dispersion would be the, the minimal dispersion and for fix n and d would be the minimal dispersion among all the all the set p with n points. And so, as Boris mentioned in the his talk in the first part of our talk, the dip, the dependence of the dispersion when for fixed d when n goes to infinity would be some constant over n, and then we are interested in the, that constant. So in this part, I will, I will talk about the construction and our construction will be a modification of the Houghton sequence. The Houghton sequence gives us CD is at most two to the D times P1, P2 to PD, where these D numbers are just D distinct primes. So this quantity is roughly D to the D plus some lower order term. And our in our in our construction we gave a upper bound, which is d square log d, which is better than that, far better than that. But our construction construction will be just a random subset of a Houghton sequence. So it's for me it's quite surprising that a random subset works far better than the Houghton sequence, like because they like the the map. Okay, I, I will talk about the Hilton sequence. And the map they use are the same, but a random subset will work better than that. So for the Hilton sequence, we first define a binary digit reversing map. So for a number, we can write its binary expansion and we reverse it all of its digit and put it behind, like in the decimal part of it. So for example, if we if we take our p to be two and our, we plug in six, we write six into its binary expansion, which is one, one, zero in, which is one, one, zero in its binary expansion. So something went wrong. So we write six in its binary expansion and it is one, one, zero. So we reverse it, it will become zero, one, one. So we, so the R2 map of six becomes zero point zero one one, which is three over eight. And similarly, R, the R3 map of six, it will get two over nine. And the Hilton sequence for a fixed D would, would just be a, point in D dimension where its first coordinate is given by R1, RP1 of X and second one is RP2 of X and so on. So the map R of six become, will be R2 of six and comma R3 of six, which is just three over eight and two over nine. And, R, and the whole ten sequence is, is just the collection of the R image of one, two, three up to N. So here's a picture showing the Hilton sequence, one of the example. And in our example, the point six will be mapped to this point, which is three over eight and two over nine. Okay, so as you can see, like the, the Hilton sequence, 
like really depends on like the okay I I will introduce a kind of box called canonical box, which is easier. It is easy to understand when does a point of our potent sequence falls in the canonical box, and I'll explain that later. So a canonical box is basically just a box which in each in each coordinate it will be a, it will be the interval between two consecutive fractions where both of its denominators are uh, like the same prime power. So for example, this yellow box here, this yellow one here, the x coordinate is between two over eight and three over eight. And its y coordinate is between zero over three and one over three. So it is a canonical box. Similarly, the green one is also a canonical box. And as I mentioned, we're interested to in studying when does the whole sequence fall inside a canonical box. So when does R of X inside B? So let's look at let's let's fix a canonical box B and look at its projection. It's projection to the first coordinate. So we know that any number between in this interval, which is the interval here, its binary expansion will be something like 0 0.011 and so 0 0.011 something. So we know that in order to make this point inside this interval, the binary expansion of X should be something like something here and ending with 110 in its binary expansion. And similarly, we know that Look at project it, project this box to its y, y to the y coordinate. The the three three expansion of x should end with number two one. So this implies, so this this is equivalent to say that x mod eight is equivalent to one one zero, which is I think it's six. And x mod nine is equivalent to two one in stringary expansion, which is seven. And so this is equivalent to say x mod seventy two is is seventy. So we we find a way to characterize when when does our our point in Houghton sequence falls inside a canonical box, which is. Which, which is just like X satisfying some, like modding a certain number and like, it's just like the, the remainder of X divided by certain number is a fixed number. And note that the number 72 here is exactly the, the reciprocal of the volume because like the, interval, the length of the interval here is one over eight. And the length of the interval here is one over nine, which is just the number appears here and here. So we come up with a conclusion that the, if we if we have a like like the if the the r r of x falls inside a canonical box B, then it is equivalent to a uh, equation modding P1, K1 to PD, KD, where these are just the, are just the denominator of the, the like the, the bounds of the intervals defining B. And so we have this proposition saying that if we, if we take our Hilton sequence of length N, it intersects every canonical box with volume at least one over n. So this is because we want to solve this equation. We want, we, want to, we want to show that this equation has a solution x, but the, the number modded in this equation 
is exactly the reciprocal of the volume of B, which is less than N. So we can always find a solution between one and this number here. Okay, so, so now we know that if we take a Hilton sequence of length N, it hits every canonical box of volume at least one over N. Then what about the general box? So for every general box, we can actually shrink it to a smaller canonical box. So if we take, for example, if we take this red box here and we project it to its, to one of its coordinate, one of the, the coordinate axis, then we can guarantee to find a canonical interval here of length at least 2p, like of length at least one over 2p times the length of this interval of, of the larger one here. And we, we cannot do better because you can think of the example that the, our, our red box is slightly smaller than then like, so this, like the one step larger canonical box will be this one here or this one here. But you can take the red, red box that intersects most of them, but not containing them. So it can be really like 2p times larger than, than, than the largest canonical box, canonical interval we can find within that. And so we lose 2pi in the ice, ice coordinate and we multiply all the numbers. So we get two to the D, we get two to the D times P1 to PD. So in conclusion, the Hilton sequence of length N, which it has N points, it hits all the boxes of volume at least two to the D times P1 to PD over N. So we have n points and hit every boxes of this volume. So CD is at most two to the D over P1 to PD. Okay, and as you can see in this construct, okay, before starting, before I start to explain our construction, are there any questions for this part? Okay, I, I guess then I'll, I'll keep going. So as you can see in this proposition, we, the largest canonical box is far smaller than, uh, than this red box here. So we lose a large factor here and we don't want to suffer that factor. So the first idea is to look at a more general class of boxes which are just, which, which are just boxes bounded between like two fractions where its denominator are prime powers. Like in, in canonical box, we, we require bi and ci to be consecutive, consecutive numbers. But here we, we allow to pick more general bi and ci's. So in this case, we can see our red box can be shrinked to a box which is larger, like which is almost as large as the original red box here. But it becomes harder to understand when, when does a point R of X falls inside our box beta here. So we 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 want some more control on the location of beta so that we can tell by like we can tell whether r of x is inside beta so our next problem is to study when does r of x falls inside beta so we know that if r of x r of x is inside a canonical box it is equivalent to solve this equation 
and so so we can we can we can decompose the beta into many pieces of canonical box. For example, here we can decompose it into eight pieces of canonical boxes. So the the condition of R of X inside beta becomes becomes this condition. When her like instead of X is X equals A mod mod this number here, we becomes to we will want to ask when does X contain in, in the set A, which is given by these eight boxes here. So in this case, the size of A will be eight. There are eight numbers for us to pick. For and also modding this number here. But it's hard to answer if, if this equation, because this equation is too general. So if we are given the information of X mod some smaller number, so for each prime, I take a minus three here. So if we, if we already know the information of X mod, mod in some smaller number, it, it will be easier to understand like when, when does X falls inside this set, this list A. And this is equivalent to say that our box beta is contained in a slightly larger canonical box B, which is the blue box I draw here. So we define, and so, so our goal is to first deal with such beta, such beta that is contained in a slightly larger canonical box. And we also want our beta to have volume roughly one over n. So we call such a pair beta and like the canonical box contain it B. We call such pair a good pair and such a beta, we call it a good box. So we want to first find a subset of our Houghton sequence that meets every good box. So I want to first understand when does R of X is inside beta. And since, since beta is contained in a canonical, slightly larger canonical box, and we know that the, the point inside this canonical box here, the point that maps like the number after the, the map, R map, that, that will hit this box would be a arithmetic progression because all the X satisfy some equation like this, modding another number here. So it will be a arithmetic progression. So we can write it like A plus TD, where A is the first term of the arithmetic progression and D is just a step of the arithmetic progression. And we, and we define the set L to be all the T such that it actually hits beta. It's not, it is like A plus TD is not only inside this big box, but it's actually inside this smaller box beta here. So in, in our case, the, in, in this example, the, the arithmetic progression will be just all the even numbers, zero plus two. Well, zero plus two T. Well, actually, actually, I think it will be two, but I will zero, you know, so it's a mistake. And our set L of B beta will be all the, all the T that make this point falls inside the green area here. So it will be two, five, and maybe other numbers, which is larger than all the, all the points I draw on this picture. So our first claim will be that the number of possible LB beta among all the good pairs, the number of possible, the number of possibility will be bounded above by gamma to the 12, where gamma is just the product of all the primes, where like these D primes. And so gamma, so the size of gamma is 
just roughly d to the d. And to prove this claim, we know we, we know that the list LB beta is only depends on the location of this green this green area, this beta inside the larger the outside B, and also the location of these red points. So we will bound the, the possibility of these two parts. So for the first part, we know that there are in, in the ice direction, there are PI cube ways to pick the, the left bound of our green area and PI to a cube way to pick the, the right, right bound of our green area. Since like it, it, this follows from the definition of pair B beta, beta and B. So the total number of possibilities will be, you just multiply all these numbers and you'll get gamma to a six. Okay, for, and for, for the second part, we want to understand the location of red points inside a, inside a canonical box B. And it is determined by you look at all the all the red points. These are these numbers are the preimage of the red points of our our map, and we know that it is deter and we we can take mod, mod in this number, and all all these informations are determined by a and d, mod in p i to k one to p b k, but since we, we know that all of these are, are inside our outer box B. The information of A and D mod in P1, K1 minus three to PD to a KD minus three is fixed by our choice of D. So there are totally gamma to a six possibility to fill out the remaining gap of this information and this information here. So there are totally gamma to a six possibilities. And we'll, the idea of bounding the possibility of LB beta is that we want to apply union bounds. So you don't want to have many different sequence, many, many different objects, ob objectives of, like we, we don't want to have many different targets of the green, the, the, the green part, the good box beta to, to hit, because we want to take like re a random subset of our Hilton sequence. And we can prove that with some probability it hits one of the green, green part, but we don't want to have many green parts. So we want to upper bound the number of possible targets. Okay, so we, our goal, if we look at the R inverse image of the, the picture I drew, then our goal becomes like we want to, we, so, so the red points here are exactly the red points in this picture here, like before the R map. So it's the inverse image of that, of the picture I drew. So the, the red point represent all the points that will, after taking the map, the, the R map, you will, be, you will fall inside the, the blue box. And the star here corresponds to all the points that after the R map will fall inside the green part. And our goal is to find a small set that intersects all the Y. That means that if we take the, this small set here, Take its R image, it will hit every green box, right? And the idea is to use many short intervals to hit all these stars, to intersect all these Y. So Y, y is just the, 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 the set of the location of these stars. So there are many Ys for different good pairs, beta and B. So Y depends on beta and B. And our goal is to hit every Y, to intersect every Y. So this 
So we, we are going to use the interval of this length and the interval will be chosen inside this, re, this region. Okay, so we encounter the next problem. Like there are too many possible y because there are many arithmetic progressions. Like we know that since we are choosing interval from one, from one to n gamma fourth, like any any number between here could possibly be your first term of your arithmetic progression and also the the step of your arithmetic progression. So we we want to look at only for for each arithmetic progression we want to look at like its representative because we know that if we have two arithmetic progression that its first term like their first term are close to each other and their step are also close to each other then the t term of the arithmetic progression will be also close to each other when t is not not too large so it's just like a picture i drew here you have the green point are one of the one of your arithmetic progression, and the red points are another of your uh, another arithmetic progression. And if the if the first term a and a prime are close to each other, and the step d and d prime are also close to each other, then every term here and here they are they are also close to each other. So if we cover a plus td by a interval i here, by this interval i here. And then we can slightly enlarge our interval i and get a slightly larger interval i prime. And the, the interval i prime is guaranteed to cover the green point here. So it's guaranteed to cover the other arithmetic progression. So we can only look at a subset of these arithmetic progressions. So namely we take, for each arithmetic progression, we set A prime to be the largest multiple of N over gamma to 100, which is, uh, that is less than A. And I think this is B here. So, so we round our first term and our step, round it down to a multiple of this number. And we want to, and we can only deal with those special arithmetic progression, which its first term and its step are multiples of this number here. We run it down and we, we want to, if we, if we can cover all these special arithmetic progressions, then by, by intervals, interval i, then for each interval, we can slightly enlarge the interval to get an i prime. And that is guaranteed to cover your original arithmetic progression. That is guaranteed to hit this star here. Okay. So by our choice of a prime and d prime, the total number of special arithmetic progression is bounded above by gamma to 300. Because you can see there are only the like a prime and d prime can be at most n times gamma to a fourth, and each of them are a multiple of this number. So the 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 total possible total number of choice of a prime and d prime is like gamma to a one hundred or four or so. So you can bound it above like by gamma to a three hundred. And our new goal is becomes like we want to intersect those special y, which are just the star you drew on, you put those star on these arithmetic progressions. On, on those special arithmetic progressions. So we can upper bound the number of special y by the number of special arithmetic progression and the possible location of stars inside the arithmetic progression. 
because this, this is the definition of LB data. And in our first claim, we bounded, we have bounded this term by gamma to a 12. And as discussed before, we, we bounded this term by gamma to a 300. So the total, total number of special Y we need to deal with is bounded about by gamma to a 400. The point is that this number is still roughly D to theta of D, and it is independent of N. Okay, so now we are go we're going to pick uh pick random intervals of the length I, I I promised. So for a random interval of this length, it the expected number of point like mm, so we, we want we want to know to to understand the probability of a random interval of this length hitting y. And we know that y represents whether whether a point hits your box beta here. So why y represents the 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 box beta, and we know that the volume of beta is roughly one over n. So the expected number of points hidden by this interval will be, will be n, to, n over gamma cube multiplied by one over n, which is just one over gamma cube. And also this interval is really short, so it can only hit beta, at, it can only contain one point of y at what, like at most one point of y. So the expecting number, the expecting number of points it hit equals the probability of hit, like of the interval hitting y. So the probability of this interval i hits y is roughly one of, one over gamma cube. And if we sample all random intervals independently, the probability will be just, you, you, since we sample it independently, you just look at the, the complement of this event, which is one over, one minus one over gamma cube. That is the event that one of the, one of, one interval missed y. And so all of the interval missed y will be just this, this probability raised to power L. And as we discussed before, we, the, the number of y we need to deal with is bounded above by gamma to a 400. So we can apply union bound to say that the probability that there exists a y such that all the error intervals missed y is bounded above by taking union bound. They are totally gamma to a 400 possible y. And each of them, each of these events happens with probability at most one minus gamma cube, one minus one, one over gamma cube to, to the power error. And we use this, this bound here to, to up to bound this part, it will become exponential e to a one my, e to a negative l over gamma cube. And we also take the logarithm of the first term, it becomes this part. And if, if we take l equals 500 times gamma cube times logarithm of gamma, then this number will become less than one. Which means that there is a choice of intervals of these arrow intervals that hits all the y. So if we take the image of these arrow intervals, the union of these arrow intervals, it hits all the good box beta. And the total number of points we use is just the number of intervals we used times the number of points inside each interval which is 
So, so the gamma cube term cancel with this term. So we get, so there is also an n here times n and times n. So the total number of points we used is C times D log D times N. So now we're ready to deal with general boxes. Like re re remember that our construction of the, in, in this stage, we constructed a set P that hits all the good boxes. And the size of P is just this number here. But it's still not true that P hits all the general boxes, right? So we want to under, then when does P hit all the general boxes? I, I, mean, I, I mean, we want to construct a set by, by, by this P well, that hits all the general boxes. But the problem is that for a general box here, not here, so for a general box here, this red one here, it might not contain a good beta because we know that a, a good beta must be contained in a, in a canonical box, which is slightly larger than that. But for this box here, the smallest canonical box that could contain beta will be this one, which is far larger than, than this set. So, so we want to find a way to avoid this. And the idea is to apply a shift. So we shift by this vector here, which is just, you, you take 0 0.011111 and oh, oh one is, in, in the P1 nary expansion and to P I nary expansion for the ice coordinate. And one of the one of these shifts can make your make your box S contained in the canonical box B that is not ridiculously large, larger than your your set your box S. And the proof of the idea of this, of using this shift is because you look at the binary expansion 0 0.0111 and assume the, the length of this, of its i direction is roughly p, p to the i, which, and this is the i, i digit. Then all the shifts applied here will simultaneously shift your this box and the the boxes of your of the proper size you want the, the canonical box of the the size you want. So these shifts doesn't matter, and also these shifts are really small. So it's just a small perturbation between so, so that. It's just a small perturbation compared with the, the, the size of this canonical box here. So the, the shift only, that only matters is just this digit here. And, you, and we, we know that if we shift this box, like um, if we have a, this box, and you, you have a red box that, that is not contained in your, the canonical box of the proper size you want. Then you, if you shift it by, by just one over P here, like let's suppose the lens is one over PI and you shift it by one over PI plus one, then it's likely to fall inside the, the, the canonical box here. So one of, so we take D plus one different copies. And we know that for all the D directions, 
and most one of them fails for one of the directions. So if we take D plus one copies, then there must be one copy that, that is good for all of the directions. And the total number of points we use, since we take D plus one copies, the total number of points we use becomes D squared log D times some constant. And it's guaranteed to hit all the boxes, all the general boxes of volume one over n. So the total number of points is this number multiplied by n. So, so we get our upper bound for, for CD is at most C times D squared log D. And we know that, okay. And so, so that's the proof of our construction. Are there any question for this part? If there are no questions, I can tell you some remarks. So first is the about the Elmos net. So in order to get the Elmos net, we can actually use our modify the the p here the p the point set we get in our first batch by using the the random random intervals and. For almost net, it requires like all, all the directions are mod in the same prime. Instead, like in, in, in our whole proof, we pick D different primes for different directions. And for to construct a almost net, instead of using D distinct primes, we use D distinct irreducible polynomials under, under the field FP for the fixed P you want. And so that, that makes the, the canonical box in each direction using the same denominators, using the same prime P. And another remark is that this, this random, random, random point set can be actually computed in linear time in N because we can formulate this problem as a problem that is independent of n, which is only depends on p, and maybe solve that problem by say brute force or something. And then we can take, we can recover that, we can, we can find our set p here by solving that problem and just take like, okay, uh, so uh, as you can, See here, like every, every the, the intervals are chosen inside one and n gamma q and so n gamma fourth, and the length of each interval is and each interval is of the form x and x plus n over gamma q. So if we divide everything by n, then it becomes a problem that only depends on d. And in order to produce your P, you just multiply everything back by that factor N. So the whole, the whole set can be computed, I mean, by computer, computed in linear time in N, but the dependency of D is really bad. Like we, we didn't figure it out. Okay, I think that's my talk. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, are there um, any questions or comments? Uh, maybe I have a question. Uh, what do you think is um, the right upper bound? Um, maybe so, your approach could be improved on uh, some in some ways, or uh, what do you think? What is yeah, we, right. we think we think we are really wasteful for 
passing from good boxes to general boxes. Since good boxes is already a family of boxes that, that is large in some sense. So we think we, we lost a factor of D in this step. We, like the P we've constructed here is D log D. And we, we get a D square log D by, by using D, actually D plus one shifts. And that is, we think that uh, that is quite wasteful, but we cannot figure out a good way. So if, so I would say we, I think the correct one would be something between D to D log D. Mm, I see, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, are there any uh, other questions or comments? So, uh, so if uh, we have no other questions, maybe we should think um, think way again. And uh, and thank you all the speakers. Yeah, thank you and, for the talks. Uh, all the audience, the ones who are here, we got a chat.